problem, we're mixing two solutions together, and we're asked what are the concentrations of the ions in the final mixture. We have some choices here. So uh, first thing I'm gonna suggest is that we figure out what the balanced reaction is for this process. I've got barium chloride reacting with silver nitrate. And they're both aqueous solutions. The reaction that we know that can happen here, and it's the only one that we know that can, is a double replacement reaction where either there can be a precipitate, which will be a solid, a gas formed, or a neutralization reaction. In this particular case, there will be a precipitate. It's my favorite exception to the solubility rules, meaning that almost all chlorides are soluble and therefore aqueous. Uh, silver chloride is one of the exceptions to that rule. It is a solid. The barium nitrate will be the other product and it will be aqueous. All nitrates are soluble and therefore aqueous. I need some twos in here. That's going to be important. And now this is balanced. And when this asks, what are the concentrations of the ions in the final mixture? When we mix these two together, some solid will form, some reaction occurs, and so this is a limiting reactant problem. And what's different than this, about this than most limiting reactant problems, is that we're going to need the concentrations of each of the ions. And so we're gonna do what's called a uh, mass balance table, and it's sometimes called an ice table, and let me show you what those are. Oops, I should, well, normally we could have written this out with the reaction, but let's, let's go ahead and write our ions here. So I have barium two plus, I have chloride minus, I have silver and I have nitrate. And it looks like I made this a little too long. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to keep track of the moles Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to keep track of moles of each of these um, since it's moles that react. And I'm going to have initial moles. I'm going to have reacted moles, which is sometimes called the change in moles. And then I'm going to have leftover moles. And if you should take uh, general chemistry two, uh, the leftover moles are oftentimes the equilibrium moles. So uh, initial reacted and leftover uh, are what we would typically call the moles in this course though. Okay, so uh, to find our moles, we're going to take are 15 milliliters of 0.1 molar barium chloride and find the moles of barium chloride. I'm gonna convert my milliliters into liters. And 0 0.1 moles per liter. Well, this is just gonna be the molarity. And then I get moles of barium chloride well, it's times 0.1, which means move the decimal place one place to the left. And in this particular problem, you are okay to use two sig figs. The third one will, I think, almost always be a zero in this case. Anyway, we've got this many 0 0.0015 moles of barium chloride. Since there's one barium in barium chloride, the moles of barium will be the same as this number initially. And since there are two chlorines, we're gonna double this number to get the moles of chloride. We'll do something similar for silver nitrate. Take our milliliters, convert it into liters, multiply it times the molarity 
broken up into moles per liter so we can find moles. We get 0.0035 moles of silver nitrate, which means that's the same number of moles of each of these. Okay, so that's where we get to at the beginning. Now, um, now we have to figure out how much of each ion is reacted. The reaction, so if we were to do a, a net ionic equation, we would see that the two species that are reacting here are the silver ion and the chloride ion, and they're forming a silver chloride molecule. And so we're gonna look at these two ions and we would call nitrate and barium spectator ions. They do not participate in the reaction. So that's why I'm going to only look at silver and chloride to see which one's my limiting reactant. These react uh, essentially one to one or two to two for silver, two chlorides to two chlorides. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that chlorine or chloride has the smaller number of moles we're going to assume that is our limiting reactant. And as much of the chloride as reacts is the same amount of the silver that reacts. And this is a slightly different approach to the limiting reactant problem, meaning uh, we could have gone through the regular route, found the limiting reactant, but because we're interested in only the two species, um, and their final concentrations, I think this is a good approach for this particular problem. And even if we wouldn't have come up with it ourselves, hopefully we can kind of see the logic for this problem. All right, so that means that chloride and therefore barium chloride is our limiting reactant, but chloride is the one we really care about because even though Barium chloride is our limiting reactant. Only the chlorine or the chloride is reacting. None of the barium and none of the nitrate react. And most of the silver reacts. But not all of it. Because, and so that's now we've just allowed the reaction to occur. That's changed the concentration of our two reacting species. And now we have moles left over. And we're being asked to find the concentrations. We can see that two of these choices have zero molarity for the chloride ion, so it's going to be one of those two. One of them actually has zero for silver as well, so we can already see what the answer is going to be. Let's go ahead and figure this out though. So we have moles, these are molarities. What we need to do now is divide by our total volume, Oop, get on screen there, which is 50 milliliters. And let's start with silver. So silver concentration, we have our moles left over. Ooh, let me get back on screen here, maybe even zoom out a little bit. There we go, my apologies there. Now, uh, let's go ahead and we said our total volume was 15 plus 35 or 50 milliliters. Zero point zero five zero uh, liters, and indeed, point zero 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 five divided by point zero five equals zero point zero one. There we go. And what you can do. You can see that there's three times as much barium, so its concentration should be three times larger, and seven times as much nitrate. You could do these calculations to show that this first answer is correct for the final or leftover concentrations um, after the reaction occurs.